Yo, what is up, my lovely fiends? I hope you're doing great. We have an ultimate master level master dual labyrinth deck list for you. This is what I use to get through diamond and master, and hopefully it'll get you all the way from wood or rookie, whatever it's here you're in, plastic. It'll get you through. This is tried and true. And first off, this is a furniture build. I did decide to switch during my climb because I thought this was better. The importance behind this is be able the the flexibility really to be able to switch between first going first and going second. Uh, the hand traps, um, which we'll see. This is why I mentioned the furniture. The hand traps play very very well with the furniture. Um, so first off, since we're talking about the hand traps, we know the bug. Don't need to discuss him too much. We know why he's good. It's up to you with your ratio if you want to run three, one, or none. Um, Sci uh, frame gear gamma. We'll return to him in a second. Ash shuts down the mirror. Um, and branded, right? Branded fusion. Uh, Ghost bell was surprisingly really good. It's also meta uh, uh, dependent. So a lot of this stuff is graveyard reliant, as we'll see with this name of this deck list pretty soon, right? Um, Imperm is great too, shuts down Ariana and Flu and a bunch of cards. Uh, but for the mirror match, I did have a game where I ashed a welcome and I ghost belt a, a big welcome. Yeah, get fucked, kid, right? So, <laughs> uh, so the last uh, trap to talk about in detail though, Gamma. It, it's just so good. And even if you have the driver, you could use the furniture to pitch it off because you could still uh, Gamma with driver from the grave. But especially going second, you can negate and destroy something, which is something that none of the other hand traps could do. It could hand trap. You could do this to a hand trap, right? You could do this to an ash. Um, and I've done that before on my going first turn. And because you have this out and this out on your turn, you're able to synchro into their boss, the Omega and hand loop them for one. It's incredible. It doesn't happen that often, but really just being able to negate and destroy uh, a monster from like anywhere is like really really sick um and it nobody's running this like it's just i, I could talk about this forever but let's uh get into our uh trap or excuse me our labyrinth <laughs> lineup before the trap lineup um well we will just put in three of her and then we will start putting in two 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 one always one you never want to draw her. It happens all the fucking time. One, two, you could run three, and one on top of three of the old classic. You could run two uh, because this guy is just awesome. You definitely run three of, of this one always. So, oh my God, we're almost done with the deck list. We just got about 12 more cards left, but this is essentially like the hand traps and the engine of the deck. Um, you definitely want three Ariana. This is, might have changed if you ran two uh, previously like I did. You, this normal summon is so, 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 so important now because it searches you out Lady, which could be special summon right after you search her, and Big Welcome, which is just, oh my god, Ugh, nut, right? Uh, <laughs> some quick, quick, quick and dirty um, things that um, mechanics and, and quote-unquote combos, right? It's not like you're comboing, but setups and chaining and things you could do. So if you have Ku Clock, the reason why we run this is to be able to fire off any set trap that you have as long as you have a labyrinth card in the field which could include itself as i'll describe right now so let's say you discard him for its effect right by ku clock in the grave you go now you are able to you know uh, activate one trap that was set that turn um you could also if you have furniture pitch the furniture set a welcome or big welcome preferably big welcome and then ku clock's other effect will allow you to either add it to your hand or special summon it. You could special summon it, fire off that big welcome you just did for a lovely, lovely will then, or excuse me, uh, the big welcome itself. It's almost like a compost, but better for your archetype. We'll be able to bounce this to the hand, proc lovely's effect, and you'll be able to pop a card in your opponent's hand. This could be done going first. This um, could potentially also be done going second as well, um, which is why th it's so beautiful to have these furniture cards. This, it's just, that's the big reason. Again, it's, it's that flexibility and going second. Uh, on your opponent's end phase, you could pitch this. Um, even if you don't have Ku Clock, that's fine. But you could pitch um, you know, this and another dead tr you know, card in hand. It could be any one of these that you don't need. Um, and it could be another, a lot of times I pitch another welcome or big welcome. Big welcome especially because it does have that graveyard effect. So you could pitch a big welcome and this to, for a set big welcome. And if you have Ku Clock in hand, normally you do that first so that Ku Clock could 
return from either the chandelier or the or the stove respectively to be put on the field for what i just mentioned firing off big welcome on that turn but if no ku clock that's fine on your turn turn two you could fire it off around the draw if you wanted to um or just a welcome if you don't have anything on the field again it's just amazing i don't want to spend too much time talking about the mechanics you could just if you're you know feel free to ask me in the comments for anything in detail about how to chain what what type of situation could comes up uh could come up and please feel free to just watch my videos all of what it described has happened like a million times even in the mirror matches um which is why you uh run the labyrinth labyrinth i mean not why necessarily but a lot of people even the, in the tcg the pros don't even run this uh you don't want to rely on this too much so that's pretty much all the ratios again don't want to draw her you could run three of her just because of lady just because how great she is and the trap recursion and again a lot of these mechanics that were applied with firing a trap first turn could also be applied to um eradicator <laughs> which uh you know well before we go into eradicator actually we'll just uh before i forget we got the pot cards here one two one you could run three i run two extrav i run one prosperity because i didn't even talk about <laughs> our extra deck yet but you can see here there are some things that we would want to pick out of the extra deck that we'll need uh in a second we'll, we will talk about dogmatica and again if you do opt to run super poly i would run super poly in place of dogmatica because they're they kind of nambo with each other uh you're kind of locked out of the extra deck with any type of dogmatica card but including dogmatica punishment um so we will talk about before all that we will talk about compulse I run one. I used to run three before uh, Big Welcome and Lady. This, I just mentioned it, it could bounce your card within your hand. This is still useful for bouncing your opponent's monster, but this does it as well. If you have a level eight or higher fiend, you can bounce any card. Um, so it does a lot of that same niche that Compulse does. So you definitely don't need three. You could still totally run, run two. I just recently went down to one. It's still a great card. Who knows? I might go back up, back up to one, or excuse me, two. <laughs> it's, a, it's a really great card and uh the virus the virus alive is a great uh slipknot song boom i don't run full force uh i it could be good with ariana i, I have some friends that like it i i don't i still think it's uh, a little poo poo but deck devastation is really good if you feel like you're going against sprite a lot or again all of these hand traps have less than uh what 1500 attack like all of them including the mirror match with, you know, this isn't a hand trap, but you know what I mean? The furniture as well. They get fucking blown the fuck up. So, uh, Eradicator is the one, the mandatory one of that you need. Even in tier, uh, if you call Spiral Trap, it might not hurt them as much, but every other deck, it will be very impactful. And especially if you are going first and you're able to kind of figure out what they're using, you're able to pop something out of their hand uh, with Lovely. It's smarter to do that so you know what they're doing if you really, really want to Eradicator on the draw. Or the standby right before the main phase but sometimes it is smarter to just kind of wait a little bit see what they're doing and then fire it off uh, especially if it is a mirror match you kind of do want to see them oh they're setting cards then you eradicate her bye bye right so uh d barrier is uh another uh, card that we could use i do not like different dimension ground i don't like shifter it's kind of hard to play into this deck and this deck is slightly more oh well, actually more than slightly it's a lot more graveyard reliance um so yeah i, I used to run three uh it's a hard once per turn so you t totally don't want to do that especially without trap trick which is why i want run one and i have lady that can search it out i'm not seeing that many extra decks you know besides like branded and tier still like yes this shuts it down but um so does how could I forget? Metaverse and Necro Valley. Uh, that's kind of the crux of this deck. But we'll uh, we'll finish talking about D Barrier again. I just run the one. You can search it off. It's not TCG, so you don't need to run three because you don't have a side deck. It's not as impactful, but it still is really, really good. And it could totally go up um, uh, when, when cash comes, if it does come at the time of this recording. And yeah, this is why this is called Stan Necro Valley Boy. Because this card, again, like it's this is a win con. My, I've, I've, I've been preaching the word of Necro Valley. You can see in my video titles. I've been telling it in the discords that I'm in. Uh, and I've been seeing results among my friends who have been using this and, and getting to Masters. Not only just Master 5, but Master 1 with this. It works. It's, it's incredible. It beats every... Bestial, Dragon Link, Despia, 
um, tier, obviously, uh, sprite. Those are pretty much a lot of what you're going to see. The only thing it doesn't really hurt too much is going to be, you know, unfortunately, Runic. <laughs> That's an unfortunate matchup in general for us. But also uh, Flu and maybe Exo Sister. Um, but again, those are a little bit more rare. But for the first things that I mentioned, it, it, you just win. If you draw this and you play it, you, you just win. But especially if you're able to search out or use Metaverse and chain it to a tier fusion or to a Abyssal trying to banish something, they can't do it in fizzles. So the reason why is because it negates any card effect that would move a, a card in the graveyard to a different place. So that's why it's literally like the graveyard is stuck in Necro Valley. The gravekeepers are not going to let it out. The great way to think of it because shuffling cards to the deck, banishing cards from the graveyard, special summoning from the graveyard, adding from the graveyard to the hand, that can't happen under Necro Valley as an effect. So like I said, the tier fusions, right? Uh, Merly, Shirin, Havnus, they, they fizzle under this, and the Bistials do, but uh, cost does not. So like Lubelion under the Bistials, he could still special summon himself from the graveyard under Necro Valley because it's for cost. And if you're going against the Rika matchup, Necro Valley does typically shut down Rika as well, but uh, they're still able to Rika pedal to negate one of your effects because uh, it shuffles and tributes for cost. So it'll immediately go back in the deck and yeah it's uh yeah uh not good to have that <laughs> happen to you especially if they tribute one of your guys i know this as a Ricka player myself so i digress but let's uh let's continue uh along here with the uh nambo of the deck which would be uh idp so which stands for ice dragon's prison boom i just run one uh you could run two uh, it's just like you don't want to run two if you're using Necro Valley, but if you guys opt not to use Necro Valley, I don't know why you wouldn't in this format. But if you decide not to, you could run two. I like the one, it's the only really big Nambo besides you know our, our chandelier, our furniture cards, and a lot of like lovelies effects. But, um, you, you just be good, kid, just play one before the other. Or if you ha draw this with a Metaverse and a Necro Valley, either or. You decide, do I place the Necro Valley and just hold on to this, or do I use this as a bait? Sometimes they'll pop it under Necro Valley, so it's good that they pop this one. Um, or if you have Metaverse, you just gotta decide which one to use first. If it's against Dragon Link and Tier, sometimes just firing this off right off the bat, it will, it'll just shut down their turn. Other times not, but you'll figure it out. You're a smart cookie, I believe in you. Uh, so here we got uh, Dogmatica. I feel like I'm missing a card. Did I put any evenlies in here? Ah, ha, 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 no, I did not. Uh, how could I forget? Evenly matched. Oops. Evenly. Uh, I don't need to talk about this too much. It's a great board breaker. You could run two if you wanted to. Or excuse me, three if you wanted to. Uh, especially, you could opt, again, with this flexibility. You could make this a dedicated going second deck. And you could put in things like Sphere Mode, Lava Golem. I don't like Lava Golem or Pot of Extrav, uh, or not Extrav, but Duality, because they shut down a lot of what you want to do, your special summoning, and you want that normal summon too, because of how impactful Ariana is. So I don't recommend it, but you could. Either way, Evenly is a mandatory, I think, two of at least, if not three of. Um, yeah, now we're on to our last card that will explain a lot of why this uh, extra deck looks like the way it is, because uh, Dogmatica, you send something from here, with uh, attack equal to or less, like an Intis, 25 or 100, boom. You pop that, you destroy that monster, that face-up monster, and then you're able to um, use whatever you send to the graveyard. So preferably, Intis is perfect. You're always going to be using Intis because after you destroy something with 2,500 or less attack, you're able to pop like a back row or any other card in your opponent's field. Probably not as useful against uh, tier, which is why we only run one still. You, you usually just want to search it out if you happen to have it. You're not always using this. Um, but there's other targets, including Omega that we mentioned before. When this is in the graveyard, you could uh, shuffle it. Obviously not under Necro Valley, but you could shuffle any card from the graveyard. So it's like a slower Ishizu. That's also why you don't run the Ishizu cards with uh, this version of, of Necro Valley. Um, because it's a Nambo uh, with you know IDP or Terrors of the Overroot, which is common as well. You could run them if you want, just don't run Necro Valley, in my opinion. Uh, Numeron for OTK, you could, using this, uh, you go to Draglubion first, and uh, you attach Hope to him, make him 9k, it could be any other Dragon Xyz. But yeah, only if like they have a clear board, right? If they break brick really hard, you could just OTK them, even if they have like a really weak monster out front. 
Um, for rank four, this is their only one. Baguska is the classic. You're not really going to be going into them unless you have two Arianas, which isn't likely. Um, but yeah, the rank eight stuff is really popping off. It's really easy to get Lady and Lovely out. Um, so that's why Lancelot, Sir Lancelot over here, is uh, is just like a pog ass fucking card because you could attack directly with him, and uh, he's a spell trap negate. Um, so you just instantly negate if they want to do something to prevent you from going to battle. You hit directly, main phase two, a Zeus. Um, yeah. Um, oh, and before I forget, the the other uh, dogmatica targets are Mirror Logic Aggregator, kind of a sleeper pick. Uh, you send something right, you could pop something with twenty six or lower. But if it's card sent, you could target one face-up card. It doesn't have to be a monster. Negate its effects until the end of the turn. So it's very useful in a lot of instances. Um, it's almost you know like an imperm uh, tied with a monster removal. It's actually pretty sick. Um, same thing with Bucephalus. You're like 3,500. That's pretty high, right? But then you also are able to send a winged beast, which is Garura. Yep. And you draw a card. And Garura uh, should be at like two or three if you are running super poly instead of dogmatica you can figure out your super poly targets i don't need to show you if you want to use them i think they will be get, getting better as it switches over to uh Castillo format this could be anything else in here you don't really need this car it could be a dark it could, uh, the dark charmer whatever the nightmare phoenix you know griffin or excuse me unicorn and um cerberus uh, whatever you want doesn't really matter too much. This is the only really link that you'll be going into often. I'll just quickly talk about Muckcracker. Great TCG add into Master Duel. Um, yeah, you could uh, link two of anything and special summon a uh, fiend from the graveyard by pitching a card in your hand. Could be a furniture if you wanted to. Obviously, you're not going to do this under Necro Valley. Don't do that, guys. <laughs> but um, it's also just a, the m more important effect. Not more important. You're usually going to be doing this for the Monster Reborn type of effect. But you could also, um, she also protects from uh, battle destruction and card effect destruction. That comes up quite often. And uh, it's just nice sometimes if you have the extra board space, you could link to and just have this out with like a lady or a lovely. And you're, you're sitting pretty uh, pretty tall with her. Um, and you could also revive her off of uh, Labyrinth Labyrinth if she's ever in the graveyard, which is a pretty degenerate effect. So a little bit longer than I wanted to. I wanted to get to 50 minutes, but thanks again, guys. Please. Let me know if I forgot anything. I think the only thing that I might add for future reference is cross out designator uh, for like mirror matches and for negating all the other hand traps and evenly. So that's uh, you know up to you guys if you want to run that. Um, but yeah, I typically run this as a 43 card deck. And please let me know how this works for you. This is the definitive thing. I think this will be the best thing until Cash Tira comes into play. So please like, comment, subscribe, um, and please follow. Uh, you know, stay following my content. Uh, keep up to date get that little bell up in that bitch and uh, I'm gonna talk to you guys later man. Stay fiendin bitches